idea of actually um, inviting a number of high profile women who work across a range of different sectors, um, so contemporary women working in politics, um, business culture and fashion, and really sort of asking them about how they view fashion, but also most importantly how they use fashion in their professional working lives. So that was really the starting point for the exhibition. And then really to set the exhibition in a much broader historical context, um, we've created a very immersive timeline um, at the centre of the exhibition that really sort of looks back through history, looks at um, images of powerful women through history and how they use dress to express power and authority and status. And what we've done is selected images of powerful women through history. So we start with Joan of Arc, we go, we go right back to Boudicca, Cleopatra, Elizabeth I. Um, we come up to date with Angela Merkel and Hillary Clinton, for example. Um, but there's a really interesting juxtaposition of images in this sort of corridor of power that we've created. This is where we start our, our timeline, historical timeline in the exhibition. And we very deliberately decided to start with a corset and the constraint of the corset really, sort of from about 1850 onwards. It was very much um, used as an undergarment to create the sort of what was the fashionable hourglass silhouette. So what we wanted to show through the corsets that we've selected is the fact that, you know, subtle changes like the corset becoming front fastening rather than back fastening, which meant you could get dressed by yourself. Um, corsets becoming lighter in weight, ventilated, so women were starting to travel at this period by themselves. If you're travelling to warmer climates, you know, a ventilated corset would be very, very helpful to you. Um, you know, corsets became smaller, lighter, and then gradually, as we show through the timeline, we come to the development, um, the patent really, for the first um, bra, which was developed in 1914 by an American um, woman called Mary Phelps Jacob. And there, most interestingly, the bra was developed to almost sort of flatten the breasts rather than emphasise them, which the corset, you know, was doing exactly the opposite. Well, the 1960s were a period of sort of very rapid change for women and sort of fashion uh, reflected that in many different areas. Um, so really as a result of the post-war baby boom at the, the end of the 50s, um, there is a growing teenage market, a growing market of young women who have more disposable income, they have money to spend. And of course the birth control pill um, comes in. And that had a huge impact on women's lives and also meant that women were freer to sort of take up um, roles, um, uh, you know, professional roles that, that they were prevented um, from, from doing so. So the 1960s, I think, you know, had a, particularly had a huge impact um, on women's changing roles and, and fashion was responding to that in many different ways. Well, here, um, towards the end of the exhibition, we focus on our 26 high-profile women that work in politics, business, culture and fashion. And here um, we have women representing the world of um, state and politics. And there's some really, I mean, we've, 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 brought, we've ranged very sort of wide um, to include as many different women as we can working in different sectors. So for example, here we have Princess Charlene of Monaco. Um, I was very keen to, to introduce a modern day um, royal in, into, the, into our lineup. But she's very, very particular about um, the type of clothes that she needs for her sort of her day wear but also evening wear and here we have um, a, an evening gown and a, a sort of typical sort of um, day wear for the princess um, but then next to her is a complete contrast Camilla Batman Hellage who is director of the um, charity kids company here in the UK and she's very interesting because she really goes shopping for clothes and a lot of her clothes are made within the charity and she gets the children involved. Um, and for her, clothes are very much about carrying really the personal stories of many of the children. And I think there's a very, very positive message that's coming back from all of the women that feature in the exhibition. And that is very much about, it's not about power dressing anymore, but now there's a shift really towards women feeling freer, having more choice, but feeling freer to dress as they want to dress. Um, you know, being able to wear bold colour and pattern um, into a work environment. Um, one of our women, Genevieve Bell, who's the Vice President of um, Intel in the, in the US, and she says, when I walk into a room, I'm acutely aware that as a woman, and one of the few women working in the technology field, you know, I immediately stand out. But she said, there's no point in dressing to fit in. 
So she will typically adopt um, trousers or a skirt and then team that with a, with a boldly patterned jacket. Um, and one of our women, I think, summed up really the spirit of the exhibition perfectly when she said, you know, if I'm feeling good in what I'm wearing and I'm wearing something that gives me confidence, I can actually forget about what I'm wearing and just get on with the job in hand, which I think is, is, is the message that, that, that I hope the exhibition is, is communicating, that women feel free to wear what they want to wear within their, their working environments. Thank you.